Hello friends, this is Ganesh. Hope you are doing great. In this video, I am going to explain um, the possible questions about database table. So in a bag, DDIC is a very huge topic and in that even table is a, a, the next level of the bigger one. I tried my best to cover most of the discussion points or questions and hopefully I may come with uh, one more video on the same topic. So let's get into the slides and happy to learn together or always. Okay, define delivery class. So what is a delivery class? While creating a table, uh, you come to know there are some tabs in the SE11 transaction after you click create button. Uh, and the second tab, I believe it's delivery class and maintenance. So delivery class is actually, uh, it defines or it determines whether the table data is really important and is need to be transported while installation or upgrade or client copy process. So this is for the future reference. If someone else is going to take a decision, especially for the custom table, this delivery class indicates whether this data is very important for the business to move. And if you see the types, you have seen A, C, L, G. Mostly we go with A, master data and transaction data. And here you have an option. One of the option is going to store a temporary data. So if it is a temporary and then uh, along this process, business may um, decide, okay, we don't want to go with the this, this table data for the uh, client copy or upgrade process. Okay, so delivery class is nothing but it defines whether the data, how the data is important to the business. Okay with the help of this types and maintenance option and a flag. So if you create a table, obviously the table has data that needs to be uh, manipulated with insert, delete or create options. So this uh, maintenance flag or option uh, give or indicate whether the table can, how the data can be um, added to the table whether directly they can add it or is there any restriction kind of okay so this indicates whether the possible what is a possible to display or maintain the table data or tabular view whatever it is with the help of two transactions are ac16 or sm30 or sm31 normally sm31 we use table maintenance generator so based on this option only you are able to uh, manipulate the data of a table okay there are a few options like allowed not allowed allowed with restriction allowed gives the full permission so you can see you can do whatever you want like create delete modify and read or at least see visible and not allowed is it's full not, not allowed means even you are not able to display as well and allowed with restriction means you are able to see the data but you can't edit directly okay so these are the options available for this maintenance option flag and data class so data class is coming under technical settings there is a button so you can inside the technical settings you have option called data class so here the data class give a um, information to the backend system backend system is a physical database to understand how or what type of data normally we are going to store in this table depends on that so some have work or some action to be happen in the physical database okay so that is the main idea of data class. So this option helps the physical database to understand what type of data will be stored in the table. So normally types you can see master, transaction, organization and customizing. Um, it actually keep on increasing depends on the uh, business version. Um, previously we have seen four or five times only but here you can see nine. So it's increased up to nine depends on the various business reasons. Okay, so that is the use of data class. Size category is nothing but uh, we are going to give the same thing. This is also a communication to the physical database. Uh, what is the size or what a number of records uh, approximately it's going to save in that particular table. Depends on that the memory allocation is happening in the backend. So it defines the initial memory size in the physical database and a certain fixed memory size in the database like which depends on the database system what database actually the um, business is using and based on the category also this memory size is going to vary so the types you can say 0 to 9 various um, ranges of records is going to maintain in this particular uh, types 0 to 9 
And one more is, uh, what happens if the initial memory size will get reached? It's normally a basic question. I'm giving a size category as zero, but what happens? Zero is my, maybe zero to 10,000 records. What happens if my table reaches the maximum size, maximum initial size which I assigned? So what happens is it automatically, the more space is required, it additional memory is added, it will add it, but that depends on the size category what you selected. If you select zero and the, the memory size, additional memory size, uh, it varies. And if it is one, two, three, depends on the selection, the additional memory size is going to be varied. Okay, so if you see this uh, picture from SAP um, help.com as a product documentation. So these are the initial extents for table A, B, C. If the selection category is 1, 3, 4. And uh, the additional one is going to be increased depends on how this option got selected. Okay, so this is the way the external, the additional memory is going to be increased. And then table buffering. So obviously, if you create a table, this question always comes. What is about table buffering? So just an, just a, a definition about buffering is buffering. It improves the performance when accessing the data records from a table because buffering is going to happen in the application level. So whenever the data is in the application, so the control is not required to go to the database table and fetch the record. That particular time is going to be consumed if the data is available in the application server itself. Okay. So the table buffer results sites locally on each application server in the system meaning you have a database if you have a multiple application server so that buffer is going to save in each application server that's what they mentioned locally and the data of buffer tables can be accessed directly from the buffer of the application server so time consuming process it won't go to the database uh, it, it just at least save that particular time that's what they mentioned is improve the performance and how the buffering works okay so if the program access the data of a buffered table make sure the table is buffered then only the local application server buffer works otherwise it won't that is a, a basic criteria the table should be buffered so if the program asks the data at the buffer table then the database interface determines whether the data is in buffer of the application server or not first it will check the application server buffer if yes it will take the data from there if not it will go to the database uh, database table and get the data and update the application buffer as well and uh, send the data to the requested one if it is a program or if it is a model program whatever it is okay listed out and few things or uh, technical terminology which useful once you explain the concept like database interface if it is not in the buffer kind of okay so this is a simple diagram again from the documentation of SAP. So this is a database and it's get the data and it's keep it in the buffer and go to the program. So next time what happens, it will just check the table buffer application. So table buffer, if yes, take the data. If not, again, it go to the database table and it's kind of a loop. Excuse me. So how local buffer synchronize? Obviously, because if the table is getting updated and the previous data is available in the application server buffer, then obviously we get the um, old data. It's not the updated one, right? So the buffer to be synchronized at least in a, in, in a time period, in some intervals, right? So that is the question. How the local buffer synchronized? It's very simple. If a program changes the data contained in the table, okay, the, that is uh, is going to be uh, some validations happen whether the data which is available in the buffer as well as in the table are same or not. If not, so system determines okay, whatever is available data available in the buffer is not updated one from the table. Then what happens? It automatically go to the database table, get the data, update the buffer as well. Okay, so that's what it's, it's saying here. So for that, we are going to use a log table called DD log. It's maintain the log. Uh, so for uh, the data. So what happened? The buffer still hold the old all other application tables so that the program might read only the absolute data. It means it's old data. So that is a terminology called synchronization mechanism. It runs at a fixed time interval. For example, one to two minutes. It's 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 maybe a kind of a background job. It's it's running, and then system reads the log table and invalidates the buffer sorry buffer contents that were changed by other servers suppose if someone changes the data in the database table then there is a difference between your buffer as well as your um, log table so in that case what happens in the next access is automatically skip the buffer and go to the database table 
and as well as it get the data and update your buffer as well. So buffer synchronization is it's uh, important or required, but it's actually taken care hopefully with the design of your system. Okay. And what are recommendations for buffering? So recommendations is like only transparent and pool table can be buffered, not all other tables like cluster table cannot be buffered. And the table data is frequently modified, so please don't buffer the data because every time we have to like log, it will it will affect the performance, right? So it will again go and check the table, get the updated data, update the buffer as well. And if the table is updated only once a day, example, but if it is read frequently, buffer the table. And if the small tables that are accessed frequently, also buffer a table. If it is a large table. So better don't buffer it. If you take any large table of SAP, Mara, EU, FK or VBAK, EKKO, that is not buffered because those are large table and it keep on frequently modifying the data. So those are master data, right? And transaction data also. So those tables are not buffered by SAP. So you can take some examples. One, once you want to understand some concept, you can take an example of uh, standard objects, how they're designed. And what are the types of buffering? It's always the question like buffering not permitted. So meaning uh, no buffering. If these are from SAP. These options are selected from SAP like uh, buffering not permitted. So no buffering program needs to read the recent data or the table may change frequently. So example, these tables are not buffered. But if you're creating a, a custom table, just keep this in mind and select the option. Really, your table uh, whether meet which criteria, and you can choose whether it's not permitted or switched off or buffering allowed. That's up to you. Okay. And then uh, buffering allowed but switched off is nothing but mostly this option. I'm talking about the standard level. Uh, mostly this option is uh, uh, decided from the SAP side. So they have some tables and they're not sure what type of data means uh, data like uh, data volume what, what is the data volume of the data from the customer perspective and how frequently they are updating the uh, table also they are not aware of it. So the decision is uh, taken by SAP but the change can happen in the customer side depends on the criteria data volume and data access. So those kind of table can be changed once customer decided how they want to go with this particular table. So example, CSKS, CSKT or customer center table and uh, SAP decided buffering allowed but switched off. So if you want really, you, you feel is very simple table, not frequently accessed, then go with buffering allowed or you can leave as it is. Otherwise you can say buffering not permitted. Okay. So this option is uh, the need of customer uh, decision on this. And then buffering allowed is buffering enabled with options. Yes. So um, if you say buffering allowed, maybe you 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 felt okay, it's a very small table, very less data is going to be stored, and not uh, frequently changing the content. So we can choose buffering allowed options. Okay. An example for standard table is T100W. Most of the T series are coming under this buffering allowed because very small table. So you can go ahead with buffering allowed option. And uh, DD09L is a table where you are able to see the tables which are uh, enabled which option buffering not permitted or allowed versus buffering allowed. There is a field called buffering status I believe. So there are options you can choose any of the option you can see what are all the table forget about a standard or custom. So it will list out all the tables which are coming under this option or this option or this option. Okay. So DD09L table. And next one is okay. Buffering allowed with options, right? So buffering enabled with options. So single records, generic area, and fully buffered. So single record is like it stores very less less storage space required because it's going to save only one record at a time, and more database access because only one record. If the same every time is going to be the same record, it's fine. But every time is going to be a different single record, then the database access is more. And large tables and a few records are fetching using select single, you prefer to go with this single records option. So these are the options which uh, explains you how you want to make it for your own table. And then generic area is nothing but um, based on the key fields which is going to be get the data. So all the records which matching the key fields are loaded. 
and there is an option called number of key fields so you can choose one or less than the key fields like um, at least you have to select one or at least uh, you have to say less than how many key fields in your table you have to mention that value over there and fully buffer is it's the entire table content is loaded uh, fully buffered is always preferable for small table which has very less data volume and database access is also less right and then define data log changes option so and if you create a table there is an option called data log changes yes it's it's like to identify the table data changes and it's recommended tables or it's not recommended for every table to just hold the log data whenever whenever you feel is a critical on uh, it's needed for an audit yes enable that option and uh, in addition to flag uh, it's not only flag is required there are some profile parameter also to be maintained as something about rec underscore client so this will take care from basis and log changes can be viewed in a table called db tab prt table okay so log data changes especially for the table data changes and sc scu3 is a transaction you can again there also you can able to see uh, this log data changes for a table level and uh, define data elements very favorite question so data element is nothing but it defines the semantic characteristics of a field so i can say uh, what actually business need about a field so those informations are stored in the data element especially it helps the field with the value helps screen input text column header of a list or parameter IDs, these are coming under data element. And all this above things are reflected in the screen fields. If you say F1 help, that is going to take the value, means the text from the data element only. Okay, and it describes uh, two different, um, what do you call, uh, types. One is elementary type. Elementary, you have you can just mention the predefined or you can mention the domain. And the reference type, again, you have a predefined or reference type also you can able to refer under your data element and the domain is nothing but a technical aspects or a characteristics of a field it mentions very clearly what is the data type what is the length and what is the decimal places along with that you have an option called domain has a conversion between sign and case sensitive options so lower case or upper case options and it has a value range also so value range it's, it can be a single or intervals or you can mention a value table also and uh, the defined value table so what is value table so value table is nothing but it's a table which stores uh, possible data for a particular domain so only those values are applicable uh, to choose uh, or at least to proceed further and the value table or reflect on the f4 help normally if you create any table or any fields based on this data element where this domain is mapped then only particular values are listed in the F4 help. So that is the use of value table. Mm, yep, I think um, I've tried to complete it in 10 minutes, but it's it's over the 10 minutes. So thank you so much for your time. We'll come with more questions on the same topic in the other videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.